Howdy folks, in another clean water store instructional video. Today we're going to remove the seal and spacer stack and the piston assembly on a 5900 so that it can be cleaned and uh, put back into service. So the uh, first thing that we're going to do here, we're going to take the back cover off of the valve. There's going to be two small black screws. Uh, you can use a quarter inch nut driver or a flathead screwdriver to pull the screws out and then you'll get the back cover off. Once you get the back cover off, you're looking, what you can visibly quickly see is four steel screws. And the first two we're gonna take off are down here and they are the two that hold the electronic head on, okay? So I've already loosened mine up. Again, a flathead screwdriver or the right nut driver will take them off. And there's two of the ones that are fl uh, flathead and then there's going to be this one and two others we're going to get to in a second that are either flathead or Phillips head. And then the uh, nut that's holding the yoke in place, we're going to take that off. And once we have that off and those other two screws off, now the whole front of the valve just comes away and set it carefully somewhere else. Now, uh, you're looking, now I'm going to point it up here so you can see, here's these three screws. That's the next and the last three screws that we have to remove. And so I'm taking these off. You can do this whole activity with the valve on the head. That's the idea, is that it should be on the head, connected to the bypass and the bypass would be in the closed position. So all of this I'm doing it on a bench with the valve loose. You'll be doing it on your tank. So you will unscrew those three screws and then you will basically pull the whole thing up and when you do, you'll pull some of the seals and spacers off and what you'll have is the piston. Now this is a brand new valve and obviously the reason you're doing this is because the valve gets gummed up, especially if you have a iron filter valve, you're gonna have all kinds of rust colored deposits and grit and everything. So you've removed the piston and uh, th there's the piston and there's the cover plate and then there are five rubber spacers and there's four or five, uh, rubber seals, excuse me, five rubber seals, and there's four plastic spacers, and they come out one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. The one thing to remember, if you're gonna clean these off and reuse them and put them back in, is that the very bottom spacer is slightly different than the other spacers. So there's the one on the bottom is a little bit different. It's got two little nubs on it that fit in there. So when you drop it back down, you drop it back down and twist it like that until it drops into the spot. Then you know it's seated. So that's what you're gonna do. When you have the valve like this and you've got a lot of iron rust in there and it's sitting there, take some white vinegar and pour it and uh, add some white vinegar, stick a paper towel in there to let it all wick up. And then if you've got really bad iron, let that soak in there for a couple hours. Then come back and wipe it all off and rinse it all out and then you're ready to redo the seal and spacer stack. The spacers usually can handle being reused multiple times until they finally get too wore out. The seals, however, if the inside diameter is very frayed, then you should replace them. If it's very worn and frayed on the inside diameter where the piston is traveling through, then it's replaceable. If you see that, you'll also most likely see scratch marks on the piston. It's where raw water, raw sand, silicate, sediment, stuff from your raw water got trapped in a seal and spacer, and then the valve went through it, and the valve's moving, and a little rock in there can't move, so it scratches the valve. So that's often a thing that happens in water with a lot more sediment in it, so forth. So once you've got it there and once you've got it cleaned back, cleaned up, you're going to start off with your one ring, uh, drop it down there and then stick your hands, fingers down there and then feel it. You'll feel it when it locks in and it seats. And now you've got your first spacer. Now you're going to, or your first, uh, your first spacer. Now you're going to drop your first seal in there and put it down there and you'll 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 get overhead it and look and make sure that it's uh, lined up correctly and then just keep dropping one in and then the other one in press them down each time you go 
thing until I got a little hung up on that one. Got a little bit hung up on that one. I had to get in there and fish it back out again. I'll start over there. That time it went in fine. And then the next one. And the next one. And the next one. No way to speed this one up in real time here. I have to press fast forward on the uh, thing there. And go there. And go there. And go there. And so now you put it all the way back. And if you put it back properly, then you'll see you've got about a quarter inch of a rim right there, and you don't have the last seal and the last uh, spacer isn't isn't sticking up high, and it's not two inches down below. You got about a in quarter inch of clearance, which is about the same as that gap right there. And then you're going to put the spacer down and align the thing, and then you're going to put your three screws in. And then you're going to get the valve back here. It'll take you a couple of times to get it to line up. Remember, your yoke has to be where it was when you took it out. So remember, after you put the three screws in, this thing will move up and down, and you have to move it up so that it will match the post that you're going through the hole there. Once you get it to line up, now the whole thing will sit. Now you can put the rest of the bolts back and the screw there, the cap back on, the two screws there, and voila, you're done. Thanks, folks.